Government figures suggest that the average family in this country these days spends only 30 to 40 pounds a week on food. That seems an appallingly low figure, but it looks even worse when you compare it to the amount of money we're prepared to spend on our cars. Because the AA tells us that the average car these days costs 50 to 60 pounds a week to run. Those are, of course, average figures, so you can't draw too many conclusions. But it does show the, the kind of sacrifice that people are prepared to make in order to have the mobility that comes from having a set of wheels. Of course, one way of reducing that expenditure is to buy at the very bottom of the market. So, away with BMWs and all that sort of glamour, and we're going to look at the four cheapest family cars you can buy. As it happens, they all come from uh, Eastern Bloc countries, and they sell themselves basically on the marketing pitch. You can buy a new car for roughly the cost of a second-hand one. But does that claim really bear closer scrutiny? The cars we've chosen are the Skoda 105S at £2,598, the FSO 1300 at £2,990, the Yugo 45A at 3,250 pounds, and the Lada Riva 1300SL, the luxury model, at £3,725. Virtually the only Western alternatives to approach these prices are the Citroen 2CV at £3,095 and the 750cc Fiat Panda at £3,490, both of which are really too small to be considered as family cars. Well, this is the Skoda from Czechoslovakia. It's very similar to a late 1950s rear-engine Renault design, so we're really talking about 30-year-old technology. Its main plus points, apart from that spectacularly low price, are that it's quite roomy. It's by far the best finished of these Eastern Bloc cars, both in terms of the paint job and in terms of the interior trim. In fact, it's pretty high standard. In terms of drivability, well, the acceleration is frankly very poor indeed. The handling is uncertain and skittish on, on bumpy roads. The gearbox has more than the occasional impenetrable moment. And these seats, well, they're, they're just minimal. So I would say very good value for a runabout, but uh, could be a bit of a handful on rather longer journeys. However, we mustn't forget this car regularly goes through all the rigours of the Lombard RAC Rally and occasionally wins its class. So it certainly has a fair amount of staying power. The Lada from Russia and the FSO from Poland both date from the late 60s, so we're talking about 20-year-old technology, and unquestionably they look it. And they're both modelled on uh, discarded Fiat designs, the 124 and the 125. The Lada costs £700 more. For that, you get a, a tachometer and a radio stereo and headlamp washers, but their major offering, of course, is space because they are genuine four or five seaters. Unfortunately, from then on, it's all downhill because they really are badly put together. On the outside, you've got ill-fitting panels and a marginal paint job. On the inside, you've got badly cut trim everywhere, bundles of wires hanging out and so on. And it gets worse because the drivability reflects this generally second-rate appearance. The FSO is basically very similar, very dated in appearance, both inside and out, the dashboard in particular has a sort of late 1950s look about it. So there it is, the Lara and the Polsky come off rather badly in this comparison, whereas the Yugo and the Skoda are rather better value for money. The major point, of course, being these cars are not simply dated in appearance, they're 10 to 20 years out of date at least in terms of technology. 